So for this one, factoring out the GCF, what number can both 20 and 15 both be divided by? Five. By 5. And then how many variables can I take from both one terms? Plus. Just one. So then what I do is I actually do this. Since this is what I'm factoring out, remember, factors, if I have something times something else, these guys are called the factors, okay? So if I want to figure out, if I know what this is, and I have one of these numbers, and I want to figure out what that one is, don't I have to divide, right, when you were solving equations? If your unknown is over here multiplied by something, well, then you divide by what you know to get the unknown. Well, it's the same thing here. Since I know what I want to take out, that's what I'm going to divide by to figure out what the heck is going to go inside that parentheses. Oops, I'm writing the answer. <laughs> I do that sometimes, sorry. Okay, so if I divide 20 by 5, what do I end up with? 4. Four. And if I divide y squared by y, what do I end up with? No? Y squared divided by Y? It's just a Y. One of them cancels, right? And I still have one. What about 15 divided by 5? Jerome? <laughs> and then the Y's here cancel, but there's none left over, right? And so this is how I come up with what goes inside the parentheses. Other than just trying to guess, like 5Y times what would be 20Y squared, okay? So I usually use whatever I decided to factor out as my divisor to figure out what goes inside those parentheses. It's just a way to help you, okay? I don't have to see this division on your paper if you're doing it all in your head, okay? But I'm trying to show everything that's happening in my head so <laughs> that you can do it too, right? Okay, so that's factoring out GCS. That's pretty much all you need to do and know to do grouping. So let me go into my screen over here and pull up a grouping problem. Now I've got to find them because I don't think they give them to you right away. It's got to be factor by grouping. I'm going to cheat and go to find. There they are. Oh, okay, they do give them to you pretty quick. They're supposed to give them to you in this order. So let's see about this one. So that's example one. Let me go over a second example. They also go over another topic on how to factor out a binomial, um, but I'll actually cover that in this particular um, topic, okay? So for here, when you're grouping, since they give us Four, the only way I can group it so that everything's equal on both sides is if I were to draw a line right down the middle, right? But when you draw that line right down the middle, you have to be very careful because this plus sign belongs to that 25, okay? So when you draw your line down the middle, you have to actually draw it before that sign in the middle, okay? Then you do basically what we did for example one on both sides of this line. So what does the left side have in common? Does it have a number in common? Do five and three have a common factor? Like, can I divide them both by the same number? No. So when there's nothing in common, you can use a one. And my one would not be invisible if they didn't have, my one would be visible if <coughs> They had absolutely nothing in common. But these guys do have something in common, don't they? What do they have in common? No, not that side. This side still. They have Y's in common. So that's why I made my one invisible because there is something else that's gonna go with this, okay? Now, how many Y's? Y squared. Two, yes, Y squared. So then once I've decided what they have in common, that's what I'm going to divide by. Again, this blue part is what's happening in my head, right? So what will I be left over when I divide this? I'm not really dividing by any number. What's 5, five divided one. by 1? It's just 5. Yes, 2 cancel. I still have a Y left. What do I get here for my number? 3. And do I have any Ys left? No, they just wipe each other out, right? 
Okay, whatever this sign is, it has to come down. You don't have a choice about that, okay? That sign has to come down. Then I decide, well, what do those two guys have in common? A five. Do they have any Y's in common? No, this guy doesn't have one, right? So no Y's go here. Once I've decided what they have in common, that's what I'm going to divide by. Now be careful because it's obviously a positive five, isn't it? <coughs> if that were a minus sign in the middle, I would have had to have brought down a minus sign, right? Then I should be putting negative fives down here. Okay, so be very careful about that. I'm sure I'm going to get one in a second. That's what I'm going to do for my second example. <laughs> so what is 25y divided by 5? Do the numbers first, then the letters. 5, and then the y stays. And then what about the numbers over here? 3. And then this is where you start to try to see things as a whole again. Okay? Once you've got, I call them bubbles, but once you've got the two sets of parentheses, that's when you start to broaden your, your vision again and look at the whole thing. Does the left side and the right side have something in common? What do they have in common? The 5y minus 3. The 5y minus 3. And I told you, anything that goes outside that parentheses, right, is what you should be dividing by. But if I divide by it on both sides, doesn't it just wipe them out? Right? So what am I going to go, what's going to go inside here? What do I get when I do this? y squared and your plus 5. Okay, and that's how you factor it. Now, later you'll realize that if this has a square, you probably can still factor this, but right now they made it so that you can't factor it. Okay, so that would be your final answer for now. Eventually, we're going to get to some that have like multiple steps, but that's at the very end of your first objective. Okay, where I'll do the grouping, but it might have to keep going. Okay, so this is it for now. We're going to stop there. Okay. Now I want to do another one, but with a minus sign in the middle, so that way you can see what happens there. No, that one doesn't have a minus sign. No, so yes. Are you going to show them one where it's like you have to move the numbers around so they make them mm -hmm. oh. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I'll get one. I'm going to keep clicking it, but yes. <laughs> Because those are a little tricky. Sometimes you have to like rearrange them like three or four times before you figure it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll show you how to kind of look at it so that you can pick them out right away. But yes, it is a little tricky. Okay. So this one, you cannot see me. There we go. So this one has that minus in the middle, right? And that's what I wanted to do because we wanted to see how that affects everything. So there are four terms, and when you have four terms, you automatically have to do grouping. That's what it says here. If I have two terms, I look at for my formulas. If I have three terms, I have to look at the coefficient to decide what I'm doing. And if I have four terms, no choice, I have to group, okay? So this has four terms. So I'm gonna group it. What does the left side have in common? Do these guys, can both of these guys be divided by the same number? No. no. Do they have W's in common? Yes. How many? Two. Two. So I can take out W2. And again, I'm going to write this, but eventually I don't write it anymore. Okay? Eventually it just happens in your brain. That's what's happening. Okay? But what is 5W cubed divided by W squared? 5W. 5W. What is 3w squared divided by w squared? Zero. Not zero. You still have a number. One, three. three. These guys go away, but you still got that guy, right? Okay. What does the right side have in common? Five. A five. Do they have w's in common? No. no. But this sign, I have to bring down, right? We don't have a choice there. It has to come down. So what am I dividing these guys by then? Five. No. Negative five. negative five. There is a negative five outside my parentheses, isn't there? So I need to be dividing by negative five. What's a negative 25W divided by negative five? Five. 
positive 5 and the W is still there, right? What's a positive 15 divided by negative 5? Negative 3. And so then do the left and the right sides have something in common? Mm -hmm. They have that 5W minus 3 inside the bubble, right? And then visually I say, well, if I'm factoring that out, I'm removing it from each side, okay? If I remove this from this side, what do I have left? And the same thing here. If I remove this from this side, yes, all you have left is that minus 5, right? Okay. Now we're not going to get into how to factor that just yet. It's not perfect anyway. So just leave it alone. When you get to college algebra, you'll factor that regardless if it's perfect or not. But that's not yet. <laughs> Baby steps, right? <laughs> okay. So let's see. I think I can find one where we have grouping, but it's weird because notice in both example two and example three, I was able to see something that they had in common, right? What is that? Something is making noise over here. Oh, wait, here it. No, that's not it. Let me get another one. I swear I didn't do anything. The computer thing is making noises. Okay, let me try problem type two. Yeah, yeah, this one's it. Okay. Okay, so this one is a grouping problem, but if I were to group it, okay, so I'm going to rewrite it over here because I'm going to actually have to do this a couple times. I want you to see what happens when you try to do it like normal. I have no idea what that thing is doing. Um, <laughs> when you try to group it like normal, what does the left side have in common? What does the left side have in common? The X's. the X's. And so when I take the X's out, I have 24 left and I have a W left. I'm going to bring down my minus sign. What do these guys have in common? Four. Not four. I mean, two. Right. Four and six can only be both divided by two. So when I divide these by negative twos, I get two X squared and a negative three W. Do these bubbles match? No. Okay. But the topic says it's supposed to be factored by grouping, which means we have to rearrange these so that we can get it. Okay. Now you can try a couple of different ways. Um, the easiest way to do it, I mean, honestly, you're just going to keep trying. What I do is I like to group the two bigger numbers together and then the two smaller numbers go in the back and I have to put them in this order. So I am gonna go from biggest group and then the smaller group. But when I do group them bigger and smaller, I want the big one here and the smaller one there from the big guys. And then the big one and the smaller one there from the other side, okay? So if I look at this, so basically they go in order from lowest to highest. And I'm only looking at the coefficients. So I'm only looking at the numbers in front. What numbers in front here? A one right a hidden one so I'm gonna go with the highest one which is 24 then the next would be 6 right don't look at the signs don't tell me that negative 6 or whatever is bigger than the other one <laughs> don't look at the signs just the numbers so I'm gonna have 6 next and then between 4 and 1 who goes next 4 and then the last term is going to be minus xw. Once you have the all the coefficients in order, then you can cut it in half. What does the left hand side have in common? Four. Not four. Six. Six. They can more. They have do have three in common, but that that letter GCF, right? It means what's the most they have in common, and it's six. But do they have any letters in common? Nah. No. So when I divide these guys by 6, what am I going to have left? 
and then just a W. Now here I have to bring down my minus sign. Do these guys have a number in common? No. No. Do they have any letters in common? X. X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both of these guys by a negative X, right? Because of the negative that came down. So it's a negative X out here, which means a negative X down there. I get a positive 4X, and here I get what? Positive W. Positive w. Now do the bubbles match? Kind of. Kind of? They do, right? 4X plus W and 4X plus W. So that's what they had in common. And then the other guys just go in the other parentheses. The outside guys go in the other parentheses. Okay? So you can rearrange them. I try to do them by coefficients. If they all happen to have the same coefficient, they all have one, 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 then you really got to play with it, right? I would then go with your exponent.